I was driving home today and it was absolutely beautiful. I actually had to open the windows in my car. I think part of it is because I just wanted the fresh air. We'll just wait one more minute to make sure everybody's got in and logged on. Wow, you've got a lot of people. We do, it's so exciting. I think there's a desire to travel out there, Kathy. What do you think? No, there's not. No. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night travel talk. Tonight, we will be featuring Oceana Cruises and the destination of South America. For any of you who have not been on a Zoom call before, you have entered muted. You have the ability to control your video if you want it on or off. We would love to see your faces. I think it's been a long time since we've had socialization. So it is nice to see people's faces if you feel comfortable to have your camera on. There is a chat feature. And if you do have any questions, you can type your question into the chat and we will handle them at the end of the presentation. So my name is Lisa Antwick. I'm one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. And tonight's travel talk is being hosted by the six Expedia Cruises Edmonton and area stores. We started these weekly travel talks to inspire and educate you about what's happening in the industry and to help you plan for your future vacations. We've just passed one year since travel has shut down. And I have missed it terribly. And if you're on this call, you're probably like me, you love to travel. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And I know you're probably missing it as much as I am. I can't wait to get back on a ship again as soon as it's safe to do so. Do so. so the good news is the vaccines are rolling out and I'm optimistic that travel will begin later on this year. <laughs> We're already seeing that uh, 2022 is starting to fill up. I have already had my first shot today and many of you on the call have probably either had your first shot or are booked. And I believe truly that that is the first step in getting back to the world we once knew. So our Expedia offices are open and we are here for you. Right now, due to COVID restrictions, we're asking that you either call or email to set up an appointment. We can meet with you by phone, by email. Uh, we can do Zoom calls as well if you prefer. Our professional vacation consultants are here to help you not only plan your bucket list travels, but also help you navigate because travel will be a little bit different when we get back to it. So we have a very special guest tonight, someone I've known for a long time who I love and admire and believe is probably one of the most knowledgeable suppliers in our industry. So I wanna welcome Kathy Denroche, who's coming to us from her home in Vancouver to tell us all about Oceana Cruises. Kathy, take it away. Oh, thank you so much. Well, let me just share my screen here. And uh, good evening, everybody. And thank you all so much for coming on to be with us. This is just wonderful uh, to have you here. You know, I, I just want to start to, you know, to talk to you a little bit about the industry because it is a very dynamic industry. I don't know if you know this, but you know, Lisa and I have known each other and I've known a lot of the franchise partners on this line and their teams for many, many years now. And Expedia is truly a magnificent company to work with. I will tell you though, that I look at the industry as a whole, and I don't know if you know this, but we're the second largest industry in the world. Do you know that the world actually couldn't survive without the travel industry? It means that almost 20% of the world's population is within the travel industry. It means that you know, 30 million people alone traveled on ships worldwide in 2019. And what we saw, as we all have heard many times before, is that, you know, starting last March, a year ago, I can't even believe it's a year, here we were all stuck at home. And all of a sudden, you know, this pendulum was starting to develop over the summer last year and into the fall and starting, people were starting to think, I just have got to get back to travel because the world will always travel. Things that have hit our industry over the years, it still comes back as the roaring 20s again. And this is what we're starting to see in the industry is this huge demand to travel again. And while we can't travel at this very moment, 
what I will be talking about is some of the beautiful itineraries we have in 2022 and 2023 that'll just whet your appetite for many, many, you know, uh, kind of reasons that you might want to take a beautiful vacation on a smaller ship. But I will say that we're seeing such huge light at the end of the tunnel here, and we're close to it. I know that one of my nieces has, you know, been in every marathon around the world. She's just amazing. And I was telling her a while ago, as we've all heard this expression too, that we're in such a huge marathon as the world, you know, kind of has been stalled. And she said, well, you know, Auntie Kath, I actually don't think that we're in the marathon yet because from mile one to 20 is really nothing. But it's at mile 20 when everybody starts to, you know, jump off the wagon and they just can't run anymore. And right now, everybody, we're in mile, you know, kind of 20 to 26. And we see this huge kind of shards of business coming in through our industry. And I love the fact that we can help you dream and discover what we want to do. Well, I have to say that I started out with the Love Boat in 1975. So I have been around a very, very long time. I think I'm the oldest uh, salesperson in the cruise industry in Canada. But that doesn't even matter because what I want to tell you is that, you know, over the life of cruising, when you look at our industry, it's so changed so much. And what I'm seeing now is, is this huge trend to come to smaller ships. I think because of well, the news we've heard, Everything people have just said, well, you know, I, I couldn't travel in 2020. I haven't been able to travel in 2021. So I'm going to look at a small ship and maybe do something absolutely extraordinary in a longer voyage. And this is what we're seeing at Oceana. When I started out with the Love Boat a million years ago, the fact is, is that now there's so many different kinds of ships and small ships and big ships. And all of us are so excited to get back in the water and start, you know, traveling again. But this is an amazing industry. And what I want to talk to you about is the last 12 years years that I've been at Oceana and I was with uh, Crystal Cruises for 18 years before that if any of you ever heard of that uh, cruise line just a beautiful line but Oceana I came over to 12 years ago because I was starting to enter my mid kind of early 60s then and I thought I really want to you know, kind of have this small intimate experience. And I've always loved small ships and I've always loved them because of, you know, the few things that we do. And, and one of them is that these small ships can get into ports that the big ships can't get into. So with small ships come amazing itineraries. Now, you know, 18 years ago, while I was at Crystal, this beautiful little cruise line came into being. It was called Oceana Cruises and they dove right in the middle between the beautiful big partners that we have in the premium business and right between them and these six star luxury cruise lines. And it meant that we were gonna do things a little bit differently, but we we're gonna start out with three little ships and they were 30,000 tons. It meant that 680 guests could sail on them. It meant that three of these little ships could fit into any normal size ship that you see sailing around the world in waters. And I love that because for me, it meant that when I come into a port, I don't have to be with a lot of crowds. In fact, when Oceana does its itinerary planning, and this was always something that made them very, very famous, was that they would try and be in a port where no other ship was and that we could just be the only, you know, kind of cruise line in that port. And to this day, it's still a very, very important part of our DNA. We want to stay small and be kind of more private when we come into places around the world. But the fact is, is that when Oceana kind of dove in the middle, they said, we want to do something different. We're going to have small ships. We're going to have very, very port intensive, unique, beautiful itineraries. And we're not going to be a cruise line that does a lot of seven day cruises. We're going to kind of be a cruise line that does 12 to 15 to 30 to 60 to 80 to 180 days around the world. We're going to be a cruise line that you can take these little cruises and match back to back to back to back. And so with that came these beautiful curated travel experiences. And we have now in our fleet six ships. And yesterday we announced our seventh ship called the Vista. I'm going to show you a picture of her dining room. That's all I can show you until our, our press releases are all out. Um, but what I loved about it was the fact that these six ships sail all over the world in peak time. So we're not in places for a long time, but we're in for the right amount of time. So when we do a lot of itineraries that are one-off itineraries, I'm gonna show you a few of those uh, tonight, means that we only have one sailing. And with 680 guests or 1200 guests on the marina with these beautiful six ships in our fleet that you need to look at it early. Now, this isn't a sales pitch. What I'm gonna tell you about 
small ships is that we have a certain amount of space. And so when we bring out a brand new itinerary, when we launch anything, what we do is we say, listen, best price is always first. And with Oceana, one of the things they started out with was saying, we're going to have small ships that sail all over the world with these beautiful itineraries, but we're going to take away a whole lot of things that the premium market did, and we're going to include those. We're not include everything up here in the six market. We're going to really include the things that count that are really, really important to people who travel already around the world. So we said, we're going to cut two seatings in the dining room. We're gonna have complimentary shuttles in and out of the cities that we go to. So people don't have to pay for shuttles as they come into Dubrovnik or they come into Venice and wanna go into St. Mark's Square. And as we travel around the world, those really important things for people. We said people don't shouldn't have to pay for laundry, so we're going to keep that as a, a, you know something included. N same with internet. Same with soft drinks and bottled water and coffees and teas and lattes and London fogs and anything you want. Those things we always said we were going to include. So we made it incredibly different. And we also said we were going to take away two seatings in the restaurants. We weren't going to charge for anyone to dine in our four to six restaurants on the ship. And our new Vista ship will have nine dining rooms with the same amount of guests, 1,200 guests. And so it's kind of cool. So we said, we're not going to charge for that. We're not going to have a kids program, but we're going to welcome kids on our ship. We're not going to have big announcements on the ship. Instead, we won't have any announcements except if there's an emergency. We're not going to have huge entertainment, but we're going to have really good entertainment. We're going to have great lecturers. So all these little things made it very different experience to come on Oceana. And the biggest thing is we invented the casual kind of country club casual affair. And that's because there was, you know, so many port intensive destinations. We said people don't want to necessarily get dressed up to the hilt anymore, but they still want to be nicely dressed. So you can be very casual on the ship. And I'm not talking about wife beater t-shirts shirts or ripped up jeans or anything like that. But I will say that for a lot of our guests, it's pretty cool to be able to come on and just be able to be yourself. And you don't have to have a suit and tie and you don't have to have long gowns and, you know, um, you know, tiaras and things like that. So it's a really beautiful experience. And the other kind of third pillar, and these are three things that we never change about Oceana, is the fact that we said we're going to be the official cruise line for foodies. Now, food isn't ever the reason you're going to buy a cruise. Neither is a small ship. But you always come to a cruise line like Oceana first because of the destination. And then you find out how wonderful it is to sail on a small ship. And then you find out how wonderful the food is on Oceana. Now, it's one thing that, as I mentioned, you don't buy a cruise because of that. But I can tell you the choices on board our ship for the cuisine alone are absolutely outstanding. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about that. So when I look at our ships and I think how beautifully small and intimate they are, that's one thing our guests really want right now. They're looking at us saying, maybe I will try something smaller. Maybe I'll be with, you know, for every one and a half of me as a guest, I have someone looking after me. So there's no lineups, there's no crowds, there's not about stuffiness or formality. It's about this beautiful casual experience and you feel like you're in someone's home and someone's taking care of you. So when you walk walk into our bistro they say oh you know do you still would you like that cappuccino you had yesterday so people get to know you and it's really really nice and you by the way you can walk around our ships in you know literally 40 minutes the other beautiful thing is at Oceana we said you know we're not going to have any big art auctions on board the ship those are for big ships we're, we don't have the space but instead we're going to have five to seven million dollars of original artworks sitting with original Picassos and Mure sculptures and it's the one tour you can take of ours that has an actual audio vox. And we're working on it for land tours as well. But we have an audio vox tour of being able to walk around these ships and listening to how we picked each piece of art on board. And it is a wonderful experience. We even have fireplaces and they're beautiful. Well, the good news is for those of you, if any of you have sailed on Oceana before, then you'll know what I'm talking about, that we have four little ships in our fleet. This is our kind of what we call our regatta class. This is one of the ships we take these small ships into the most exotic areas, like into Holy Land, into 
you know, parts of South America and Africa and things like that. And I love it because these are the 30,000 ton ships. These are small, beautiful little ships and they feel like you're in someone's home. And last year, over the last two, not 2020, but in 2019, 2020 doesn't exist, does it? Uh, but in 2019, what we did is we said we were going to strip all our ships down to the core and rebuild these beautiful ships. And so we did all of our fleet. All six ships were done. But they're so elegant and they're so warm and friendly. And this is what I absolutely love about Oceana is that they look like you're in this gorgeous kind of uh, silvery kind of Frank Sinatra era. So they're absolutely gorgeous. And when we look at the Marina and Riviera, that's the reason I came over to Oceana 12 years ago was I had come from a company that had these beautiful ships, the same size, 60,000 tons, 1,200 gas, absolutely amazing. What I love about these ships is that they were just more space. So, you know, I, I always put this picture in my slide because you never have to run and put a book down uh, to hold a chaise. You never have to, you know, kind of reserve any space around the ship because we have so much space for the amount of guests that we have. So it feels intimate and it feels cozy and you never on a ship with no one at the deck. But the fact is you don't ever have to worry about reserving a place. When it comes to accommodation from our beautiful frette sheets to Bulgari, Bulgari toiletries to our gorgeous linens and our room service and two people looking after you in your room. Um, our binoculars are, you know, com uh, complimentary refrigerated uh, drinks in your staterooms, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they're just beautiful. And so we kind of look and we have umbrellas and things that we think are really important to traveling people who say, these are things I need included. I need to be able to be standing on my balcony, looking at birds on the water with my binoculars. And so those are the kind of things that Oceania has. And I think what I love about them is the fact that you'll see fresh flowers everywhere, friendliest staff, beautiful beds. I mean, people that come on our ships go the best sleeps I've ever had in my life. And so uh, there are prestige or tranquility uh, beds and they're absolutely amazing. But the service is to die over. And when I look at the service on the ship, I think, gee, there's just nothing like it. I mean, I can walk into the Terrace Cafe and have a piece of fresh grilled, um, you know, fish from the that region that I'm in and it's cooked aluminium for me it means that that's the way when we're the cruise line for foodies everybody it means that we cook it to your liking at the moment you you order it and that's what I love about Oceana it's all the choices well this picture is the only picture I can show you but this is our new Vista this is our new ship that's going to be the same size as Marina and Riviera and she comes out in April of 23 just over you know, really a year and a half from now, almost two years from now. And we're, we're so, so excited to, you know, have her in our fleet. And she'll be the same size, but she'll have about 1200 guests and she'll have nine dining rooms. And she's just going to be the most beautiful thing. And the reason I love the name of this is because it's a view into the future and that's what everybody needs. So you're going to have, you're going to see lots of things from Oceana come out about our beautiful small ship. And when I even think of Marina and Riviera and Vista, all at 60,000 tons, that is still considered extremely small in our industry. Well, finally, as I just kind of wrap up our three real pillars here of Oceana, because I really want to tell you about our destinations tonight, is that when I look at the crafted cuisine on Oceana, I think it's incredible. And it's all due to a couple of people in our company. Number one, Jacques Pepin over on the right here. You've seen this beautiful gentleman for years and years. He cooked with Julia Child. He was Charles de Gaulle's you know, head of, uh, you know, chef. He was also for three other French heads of state. He believes in freshest food, sharing, everything like that. So he came on board our ship 12 years ago and said, you know, I'm going to be the culinary person. I'm going to, it's not going to be about frog's legs and beautiful cream, although you can have that. You can have lobster in every dining room you want to any time in the day or night. Um, you know, we don't charge for specialty dining or anything. You have choices on board the ship to different restaurants and it's absolutely it's outstanding. But the fact is, is that, not only was Jacques just a visionary in our food, he said, I want to be able to have the kind of fresh fruit people would never really get at home. I want to be able to have the most beautiful lettuces and the most flavorful tomatoes. I want everything made on that ship. And so everything we have is made directly on board from our ice cream to our pastas, to our breads, to our croissants, to everything we do. 
And so we have these different restaurants on board the ship you can enjoy them in. You can come up to our Terrace Cafe and just kind of hang out. You can come into the our Toscana, our kind of beautiful Italian restaurant. There's at least 12 things on the menu. Um, you know, it's like your mama was sitting in the back of the kitchen, your Italian mama cooking her lasagna. Uh, we have our polo grill, our chop house. We even, and this gentleman on the left, Frank Geringer, is a gentleman who was has been one of our chefs for many, many years our executive chefs in our team with Jacques and a couple of years ago decided that he was be going to become a vegan and so we are the first cruise line to actually have a vegan galley uh, donated just to plant we've always had vegetarian meals and kinds of specialty meals that our guests like but he said I want to have plant-based cuisine that's where our, our, our trends are going to people are starting to say I want different things and so each of our ships has 250 plant-based items and they're stunning. So when I look at our ingredients and I look at the regional cuisine and I look at all the things that are made on the ship and our plant-based meals, the, the choices you have as a guest are amazing and we don't charge you for any of it. So we have four open dining rooms on board our small regatta class ships and two and six on our, our uh, O-class ships, our Oceana class ships, Marina and Riviera. And I think you're gonna love them. And so when you come on Oceana, you'll know what I mean. And this is, I think, one of the coolest things too, is when you look at our culinary center, we on the Marina and Riviera, we decided we were gonna have this beautiful culinary center where our guests could just come on and they could say, I wanna cook from one of those restaurants. I wanna be in a culinary center, um, you know? And so we have a culinary center of 24, because of COVID-19, because of new restrictions on our ship, we may only allow 10 to 12 people in there. We don't know quite yet. And I'm going to talk about our health and safety protocols, by the way, at the end of this presentation. But for as far as the you know, curated travel experiences now are beautiful, beautiful, uh, you know, gorgeous destinations we go to. We go all over the world and we watch for trends. We watch for, you know, what our guests want. And I always say that our guests are real explorers at heart. This is what they love. They love, they want to come all over the world with us. They want to be on smaller ships and they're kind of looking and saying, well, where are you going next? So when I look at this map, I say the only place we haven't gone is Antarctica. And guess what? In 2023, we're going to Antarctica and it's so exciting. Um, but we circumnavigate Australia. We come around Africa. We go all the way around South America. I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to focus on tonight. We come up into kind of twisty type of itineraries from the Panama Canal, from Lima, Peru, all the way up through Ecuador and into uh, New York. We come up into Alaska, only 10 visits. We go all the way up to Greenland in some of the deepest fjords and over to Iceland. And then we come up to Svalbard, that little gray blob at the top of your screen there. And we still, we spend almost seven months of the year in, you know, with six of our ships or five of our ships sitting in Europe. So we're like a, not a river cruise, but we're a small ship company that gets, hugs the coastlines and we're very important and so, so we get to see a lot and really give you a great kind of bang for your value whilst you're on board the ship. And one of the things I love about small ships is when we come in early, we stay very late. We overnight in some of the most important cities all over the world. So you get a chance to walk off the ship and have dinner or take a picnic off the ship or whatever you want to do. So we're there for you as this beautiful little manor. And uh, you're kind of in our home. And we have cruises that range from seven days all the way to 180 days around the world. But, you know, I always have said with Oceana, you can't really experience this in under 12 days. So I want to talk about the tropics and exotics because, you know, Lisa had said, you know, we look at 2022 and 2023. Right now, no one really knows when we're going to truly start set sail in 21, but I know it will be in 2021. It might be the fall, might be late summer. We're hoping, uh, you know, that we'll get a couple of our ships in the water early, uh, kind of later summer. But I have to say that the 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 real demand is while we're getting our vaccines and while we're looking at things, and this is one of the things I really want to tell you about. Right now, 
uh, when we as consumers, we as guests and we as, as our travel beautiful consultants at Expedia and even with Oceana, we look at what we're thinking about right now and what we have to get done to get ships into the water, to get us to travel again, to get all of us to be able to go uh, you know, and travel again. And right now what we're doing is we're still thinking and wonder if I can't get my vaccine in time, wonder if this, but that's because we're thinking in the now what I want everybody to think about is what we're planning for is 2022, over a year away. When we look at some of the beautiful exotic and, and beautiful itineraries we have, things are going to be so different. Things are going to be different. In two, they were different two months ago than they are right now. Things are going to be different with health protocols in three months time than they were right now. Things are going to be really different in a year from now. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the trends that we're seeing towards the health protocols as well. When I look at our tropics and exotics and Oceana comes out in two seasons. We come out with our Europe and North America and we come out with our tropics and exotics. So these itineraries take us from kind of November of 2022, everybody, all the way out to June of 2023. And this is cool because we've got new routes. We've got 284 overnight adventures and 41 extended journeys. I'm going to show you some of them. And when Lisa and Randy and the whole group of Expedia, you know, team here, the six offices said, you know, would you like to speak on South America? I said, I would love to because I have done the full circumnavig circumnavigating of the South American continent and I loved it and it was on Oceana. So I want to tell you a little bit about that because so I'm going to show you some of the highlights that we go to across South America. But this is one of the most beautiful sailings I've seen. And this is, I did this except without Antarctica. So this is called Patagonia and the Glaciers. This is Buenos Aires all the way around to Santiago de Chile, which is the uh, city for San Antonio or Valparaiso. And this is a 20 day cruise. So if you've ever done a 14 day cruise, then you'll know that 16 days is achievable. And then when 16 happens, you kind of want 20. And when you've done 20, you almost want 40. And when you've done 40, you can easily do 60 or even 180 days around the world. But I love this sailing because it's on our marina. It's on our 60,000 ton ship of 1,200 guests. And so we're going to start it off in Buenos Aires. And one of the most beautiful parts about Oceana is the fact we always include your air, your taxes, and your cruise out of Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. Out of Victoria, Calgary, Edmonton, and Ottawa, we charge 250 Canadian dollars and we fly you from Edmonton all the way to Buenos Aires and all the way home from Santiago de Chile. Now, what is the cool part of it is that on every single cruise we offer that. And you can take your own air. Every consultant here on the line knows how to take your air off and do all that kind of stuff. But what I love about this is that the fact is, is that we'll take you on the most nonstop direct flight to there. And we have a thing, a thing called custom air. It means that you can extend it either side of three weeks. So you can just fly down there. And Expedia is one of the most dynamic companies that you'll work with because they know our product intimately. These people at Expedia that I'm on the line with are people who literally call me almost every day when they have a booking cave. Can you clear a wait list? Can we get this? What else can we do for our guests? So they really fight for you because they know the product. They know how to match you to the right program, whether it's Oceana or somebody else. But the fact is what I love about this is that this is an, a cruise that is so full of things to do. And so when we started in Buenos Aires, these are my pictures. These are from, you know, Eva Perone's, you know, grave site, which is one of the most beautiful sites in all the world when you go into this incredible incredible uh, cemetery. There's frescoes all over each wall, soccer's huge, as you know, the gorgeous town of Buenos Aires is like Paris in, it's the Paris of, of South America, and it's a beautiful sailing. And as we start to come down the coastline, we stop into little pockets of islands. This is called Ilha Grande. And so when you come in, the ship actually you know, stays out in the water and we take our tenders and we drop them down and off you go. And it's a beach day. It's lots of history. There was a prison there. It was almost, you know, in incredibly, you know, kind of deserted numbers of years ago. But there's really a great little walking tour. And it's all these kind of hidden little places that you would never think when you come down through into uh, the, the east coast of South America. One of my favorite cities I've ever been to is Montevideo in Uruguay. 
I love it. It's just a beautiful little urban city. It's gorgeous. You can bike ride, you can walk, you can do history tours, you can do all sorts of things. You can shop, you can just have lunch anywhere in any restaurant. Food is very safe. It's very cosmopolitan and really, really cool. Um, and then we come all the way down to Ushuaia. Now, this is the bottom of the world. And so there's a whole lot of things that happen. You see this little train up in the top right hand corner. This is the, uh, you know, the train that goes to the end of the world and back, it's got a lot of history. You can take a catamaran tour and you can go and see the sea lions. And this is where you start to see a lot of the beautiful side of, of Patagonia as well. So this is where you start your big adventures down to the Antarctic on other small ships, but this is also where on Oceana, we come through the Strait of Magellan, we come into Ushuaia and then off we go. And this is a beautiful little town. I loved this town. The food is absolutely amazing in South America. I'm only showing this to you because my son allowed me to do it. My son's an expedition guide for a, you know, a beautiful company down in the Antarctic and the Arctic. And so this is him walking up some of the great um, mountain sides on the continent. And these are his own uh, photos. But Antarctica is the kind of final frontier in my eyes. So we say Alaska is, but this is an amazing place to go. Now with Oceana, we won't land on land. We will only sail by. And what I love about this itinerary, it also has the Falkland Islands. Huge history, of course. But when you come down into the Antarctic, people go, well, you're going to be five days down there. What are you going to do? And I go, oh my goodness, from everything I know from our son, Ethan, and his expeditions, this is some of the most cool things that we're going to be sailing in and out of the peninsula and all sorts of things. So it'll be like this incredible sightseeing tour as we glide through the uh, peninsula there. And then we come up to places like Punta Arenas, and this is where there's so many different kinds of tours. So Oceana has over 3,000 tours uh, that we do all over the world, and we're adding another 500 in before the end of May for every scenario built to kind of be in line with some of the, the safety protocols. But I will say that what I love about the Punta Arenas side of it is that I had really wanted to go to a place called Torres del Paine. So it is a beautiful little charter flight. If you don't want to just, you can just do anything, go shopping, you can go anything you want to. This was a charter that I wanted to take and there was only 18 people. And as we entered into the national park, of course, Argentina is just full and Chile is full of cattle and cows and meat and beef. And they are famous for it but it's beautiful and it is just mountainous and glorious and this is why you come to Torres del Paine National Park this little house here is a restaurant that sits right over the lake you have to almost walk about a city block to get to it on a, a small little bridge that's just beautiful but the mountains in the background are what you see and this is all granite it, we used to think there's all snow but it isn't it's all granite mountain and it's absolutely amazing so you get as close as you can to it but you're saying the Torres del Paine for a full day and um, it's a 12-hour tour so when you come home to your ship I have to tell you one of the greatest things about Oceana and it's just a small ship feature everybody but it's when you come back from a tour like this the entire crew almost 200 of the staff of the crew are standing out on our gangway with our captain and welcome you back in kind of this and you feel like you're in such a family setting it's wonderful so we're, we take our every short excursion we have every kind of small tour every overland tour like Torres del Paine. We take such good care of you. And I have to say, it is a magnificent experience. I loved my South America trip. I've been to South America a number of times in my life, but I loved it. So these are the Chilean fjords, and this is right outside on our Terrace Cafe. This is one of our, our um, chefs that does our grilled lobster, our grilled you know fish from that region. And you can just go and have dinner, and they'll someone will come and take your tray and take you out to you know the, the deck, and you can sit out there or sit in a beautiful little place by yourself. And so we come up into Patagonia, and there's courses, little short excursions again. Whether you want to go fly fishing, um, you know, going into someone's home. This was. Diego, this is our guide that's holding the fish and my husband Paul's behind him. But there was only eight of us that wanted to do fly fishing and it was pelting rain and we loved every ounce of it, but it was wandering and meandering through these beautiful little lakes and rivers on someone's private property that is 112 acres of land. And so we did fly fishing, then we went into their house for lunch. Those are the kind of stuff that you're going to 
see in, in places like Chacabuca. And then as we come into Valparaiso and into Santiago in Chile, there's it's the wine country and it's the you know entire side of we have different kinds of wine tours. Uh, you can stay here, you can actually, you know, extend your journey here. Um, Barrio Bella Vista is a city, a little tiny township that is again very cosmopolitan. Everywhere you go in South America, it's incredibly cosmopolitan and glorious little shops and restaurants everywhere you go and super super friendly people so that kind of gives you an idea of as we come around the from Buenos Aires all the way around to um, you know uh, Santiago but then we have a cruise that comes all the way up to Lima Peru and this is Machu Picchu and we do incredible overland tours here we also take you into the Nazca lines you've heard of these these are where you have to fly over to see the, the diagrams in the earth and both are absolutely truly amazing I did this many many years ago and this is the sailing that happens in February of 2023 same ship marina it comes comes Buenos Aires all the way up to Santiago. So it's the cruise that you were kind of on, but then extends itself up to Lima, Peru. And truly, if I got the chance, so this doesn't go to the Antarctic, and this is why I'm showing you the different itineraries, because you can either take Falkland Islands and, which you have in this, and the Antarctic, or you can come up and do some pretty spectacular things. When it comes to Lima, Peru, Here's a beautiful itinerary for 18 days, March 19th. We fly you to Lima all the way up to Miami. It is absolutely incredible. So we come all the way up to Ecuador and into through Panama City, which is a new port for us to just stay in over, you know, during the day. So really, really cool itineraries, I was telling you, Oceana is known for. So these are kind of the land programs you can do, whether it's the Galapagos Islands or Machu Picchu, all the things you want to do. And on the other side of South America, here we are in Rio de Janeiro. And I love this city. Here's Christ the Redeemer and, and uh, Corcovada and it's absolutely amazing and so we have Copacabana Beach and this is where you come in and you can stay in a hotel here right on the beach before you join your ship and these are sailings that we do through the Amazon so in December of 2022 over a year and a half from now we'll be taking you to, from Edmonton all the way to Miami and then home from Rio de Janeiro. This 21 days goes very, very quickly, but we take you all the way into Manaus. So we come into some beautiful little towns up through Brazil and then into a little bit of the Caribbean after. This is our beautiful Marina. She's absolutely stunning. She has 1,200 guests. And so I love this. This is what the Amazon looks like in detail. So we have sailings from Buenos Aires right to Miami. We have sailings that go just a little bit closer. So you don't have to take back to backs but the reason I'm showing you these pictures is because you can take them back to back and make it something pretty spectacular Caribbean just a little bit of an extension of that so you can take these cruises and add on a little Caribbean cruise these are 10 days we don't do seven day Caribbean cruises but this is on our little Sirena this is a tiny little ship of 30,000 tons outstanding itinerary beautiful sailings into Cartagena and Santa Marta. Only 500,000 people live there in Colombia. And we take you into Panama City again. So you've got some really cool bits of South America mixed in with some beautiful, beautiful itineraries in the Caribbean. So when you're interested and you have a look at these kind of itineraries, you'll start to see that they are port intensive. They're beautiful. And I just put one here just so you can see how they kind of port intensity that we actually have almost every day we're in uh you know an area um to look at and then we stay very late at night we come in early and stay late at night so it kind of gives you an idea now, i want to talk a little bit about our little small ships in some of those areas this is the terrace cafe it's just gorgeous so you can come out here and someone will bring your latte and of course we don't charge for any of the dining or any of those kind of things on our ship but you might say, I want an omelet or I want something here. And someone will take your tray and you will come out and they'll take you wherever you want and they'll get you anything you need. So it's wonderful. I want to take away a little bit from South America because we've got quite an extensive program there. But I also wanted to take you on a very, very quick journey because I want to be very cognizant of our time here. But I want to take you on a quick journey. If you can all just hang with me for another five or so minutes 
on the rest of the world and where we go. Because if South America, and hopefully that is something you might want to do one day, because there are some beautiful itineraries there. I will tell you that some of these itineraries that I'm going to show you are also as outstanding. And they're very, very big sellers in Western Canada. So we think of Tahiti with small little ships and we take our small little ships in here. And so we take you on beautiful 10, 12, 14, 18 day itineraries, again, flying you to this glorious area in the world. This is two and a half million square kilometers of France sitting under Honolulu. As one of my friends used to say, it's only two and a half cocktails past Honolulu Cap. You should definitely do Tahiti. So I've been to Tahiti a few times and I have to say it's in a wonderful, wonderful place to go if you want just kind of a beachy holiday. We can take you from LA to Papiete all the way down to Auckland, New Zealand. We can take you from New Zealand all the way through through Milford Sound and come up to Australia, or you can back to back to back it all the way from Sydney around the west coast of Australia, which is an unusual itinerary for most cruise lines, and all the way up into Asia and into Tokyo. We take you in some of the most cool things. This is a one-off cruise, everybody, right around Australia for 35 days, always at this time of the year on one of our small ships. So when we come into places like Bali and Darwin and Perth and all the way over to Melbourne, and you even go into Tasmania, it's a cool cruise and it's a big sellout too. So it's kind of a really fun itinerary. Into Asia really briefly, I want to just tell you that we also do Cambodia and Vietnam. We have some beautiful itineraries in there. We're taking into places like Halong Bay and we get overnight there. So we can take you off in one of the little junks where you actually disembark the ship for two nights and you float between some 30 odd islands sitting in Halong Bay. So we really immerse ourselves in the destination. Well, of course, we offer Angkor Wat and our tours are built for 10 guests at a time and things like that. So we take you into the ancient city of Angkor Wat and I love this so we kind of do Asia we do Japan I didn't even show you that round trip Japan in the springtime with all the cherry blossoms and Mount Fuji and Nara and you know Tokyo and things like that one of the most popular sailings we have is, is, is Japan round trip. And then, of course, in our Europe, one of the one-off itineraries I just want to show you is the North Cape. So we have this plan for August 21. We're not 100% positive we'll be sailing there yet. We're hoping to. But we have the exact sailing for 2022. And this is where you, the sun doesn't go down for 20 days. This is beautiful weather going into some of the most glorious fjords and going right up to the North Cape and into Archangle where the explorers in 17 and 1800 started looking for the piece of land called North Cape and never found it. It was an ice flow as we all know. But this is our itinerary for August of 2022. It's 18 days and instead of leaving out of Stockholm, it's out of Oslo. So again, you can fly to Oslo from Edmonton and home from London. You can extend your stay. You can have shorter cruises, all that. But the North Cape is always around 16 to 18 days because these are the fjords that you see and they're absolutely glorious. And then lastly, when it comes to Europe, this is one of our biggest sellers and this is absolutely beautiful. This is 32 days broken into three different cruises, but we come from Reykjavik to London and back again and to New York and the whole works and Reykjavik and Iceland. This is, I think, one of a, it's a planet unto itself. As you have all read in the news, the volcano is about to go, but um, I was just going to say it's pretty amazing place on earth to go to and a very, very popular sailing. So talk to your Expedia consultant, see if there's something they can offer you, but we take you into Greenland, some of the deepest fjords in the world with muskot just hanging off the cliffs in these huge 6,000 foot mountains caving into these gorgeous deep fjords so there's lots to see when it comes to that finally just a little bit about the middle east this is one of the biggest demands right now one of the biggest trends happening next to south america next to africa all the things we have this is a huge trend this is where we take you to jerusalem we start in jerusalem in 2022 and end up in venice and with small ships what you're going to start seeing is that 
because they're small, because their itineraries are so cool on Oceana, that they're really in demand. And so if you want something, see it. And I'm going to talk to you about that. It doesn't matter if you book now and in 2022 or 2023, if we have to drop the price, you will always be protected on the best price. So you always have the best price now. And if we do have to do something with the price where it goes down, you're we're always going to protect you on that new price. And that's kind of a cool thing. But I have to say, this is one of my favorite sailings for 2022. It's 38 days from Singapore to Istanbul, all the way up through India into the Holy Land and over to Istanbul, where you get to see the Blue Mosque. And then there's some gorgeous, gorgeous shorter versions. But this is another beauty. This is Abu Dhabi to Dubai. These are the kind of itineraries. The reason I'm kind of waving off South America just a little bit is because I want you to see some of the gorgeous itineraries they do, not only in South America, but all over the world. So we've got something for every kind of appetite out there. And Africa from Dubai to Cape Town, this is my very top seller in life. And it has been every year. And it's a one-off sailing again. There's only one of them, just like the North Cape, just like you know, the, um, uh, you know, around Australia that I was telling you about, but this is a 30 day sailing and this is always December. So we come all the way through India over to the Seychelles and the Maldives and all the way down to do some safaris into South Africa. And it is a fantastic cruise. So again, little things that we can help you with all sorts of things. And of course we have a world cruise. So when you look at South America, look at the extent of where we go in South America on this, look at where we come to we actually come to victoria at the end of the cruise so we actually are always heading east and come around west and here we are and we end in victoria and then into san francisco this sold out in one day that's how in demand small ships are and longer cruises but if it's something that you're interested in that's in 2023 and things will change and there's wait lists and all sorts of stuff you can do so talk to your Expedia person about that I just wanted to mention a couple of things here when I look at our excursions and I look at our beautiful itineraries and every little beautiful thing that we do within those cities we have something built for every single guest now right now if we were to drop our ship right in the water and start sailing chances are we would have to wear masks we would have to be in a, a escorted tour excursion kind of scenario and so we have those ready to go we also have other shore excursions ready to go in case those are lifted because by the time people have vaccines and all the safety protocols are on the ship and things will change and they're fluid and they're changing all the time, is that we may not have to wear masks in 2022. We don't know yet. No one knows, but it's changing. And everything you need to know is sitting on our website and we will keep everybody up to date. The big thing is, is that there are people who just want to walk and do a coffee tour. So we've got that. People might want to get on a bike and do Montevideo, or maybe they want to just go and, you know, ride in Amsterdam, or maybe they just want to do a World War II walk and see some of the history. Maybe there's a foodie kind of tour around, or maybe they want to do yoga or Pilates in um, Dubrovnik on a private island uh, for lunch because they're wellness seekers. Maybe you just want an environmental tour where you can see wind turbines and, you know, go and see some of the things that are happening in the world. We have over 35 hundred excursions and programs for you and it's not just about now booking a cruise and having nice food that's really nice but now it's about the destinations that guests want to go to and they want to go back to the familiar places they have been to before but it's going to be new familiar and it's going to be new with smaller things to it so whether you want to go local tour you want to be able to just walk off the ship. Hopefully that'll all come over the next year. And this is it. So finally, as I start to wrap up here, I do want to talk to you about how Oceana, I think, was an inspiration in the industry to really get people to dream about where they wanted to go. Back in March last year, when we couldn't travel, we kept our guests really alive with our cruise directors, our cooking, you know, we had cook-offs, we had all sorts of things, trivia, pursuit, everything that you can imagine. And we made guests feel like they were still on our ships. But we also gave you as a guest a lot of flexibility and we kept it safe and really did value. First of all, we kind of dropped all our prices and we said, we're going to call it the ultimate sale, but it's not going to have a deadline on it. So we dropped our prices almost 30% on almost all our sailings as of April 1st now 
that was for, for this last year. As of April 1st, we're going to have price increases um, on 80% of our sailings because we're filling up so fast. But the cool part about the health and safety, and this is one of the things I really want to make sure that you understand, is that the cruise industry itself is probably one of the safest entities within the travel industry you'll ever be able to sail on. When I look at 2019, 30 million people, as I mentioned at the very beginning, sailed on cruise ships all over the world. And out of those 30 million people, 30 million, 2,800 people were affected with COVID. And out of those 2,800 people, unfortunately, 65 passed away from COVID-19. And that's when we knew nothing about it. So when I look at the record, it's 0.00008%. Cruising is incredibly safe. You know why? Because we're one of three entities in the entire world that has to report to the CDC. Hotels don't, resorts don't, airlines don't, no one has to, but cruise lines do when we have had to for the last 45 years. So we're safe because we're we can track things and we have a certain number of guests on a certain amount of space on a certain amount of time. And it's easy. And what happened is this last year, we hired 12 scientists with the Royal Caribbean group from all over the world. And we had experts come in and say, what else can we do to make it safe? And so they recommended 74 different detailed health protocols that we had to put in place. And guess what? We're putting them all in place before the ships even drop in the water. The ships are almost ready to go because they've all been redone. Now, everything changes. So our air filtration has changed to a new thing called Atmos Air. So it's the cleanest air you can possibly get anywhere in the world that flows through our ships at all times. That changed. Just like 9-11 when it happened and we had, we had no security at airports, all of a sudden it was for our own safety and our betterment of travel is that we put protocols into place. And that's what all the ships are doing now. They'll be testing on board. They'll be, all the crew will be vaccinated. Everything we do will be the safest. And we won't even put a ship in the water until it's safe to do so. So all these 74 recommendations came and now they're coming on board to our ship and we will not put a ship in the water without it. So it's going to be one of the safest things you could ever go on as far as a vacation. We also said that we wanted to give people a little bit of flexibility. So we said, we're going to make sure sure that no matter who books with us and no matter what the price is, they're always going to have the best price. That's always going to be a guarantee for us is that we are going to have the best price available for you, no matter how far you book. And that makes me feel really good. And I know it will with the Expedia people too, because our partners, our Expedia consultants and team, they know that they have to face you if there's a price drop and they don't get that. And one of the things that we did, and I love this, is that, you know, when I look at, at you know, kind of extending any kind of booking deadline, or if I extend final payments or anything like that, we try and work with our partners at Expedia. And I know that they are always fighting for you. And this is one of the great things. So we always want to make sure that you know, and Expedia always does know this, is that if there's something you want, because it's a small ship, not like a big ship with 5,000 guests, 600 guests on board are small ships. If you want something, book it, put a deposit down, and you can always cancel it anytime after. So it, that just doesn't matter. But if there's a destination that you want to look at, have a look at it. And as I look at this, I want to just tell you something. So I mentioned Oceana includes your air, your taxes, your cruise. And all of a sudden, we said, what else can we do? And a couple of years ago, we introduced O-Life, Oceana Life Choice. So we weren't all inclusive like the Six Star Lines, but we were more inclusive than the premium partners. And we said... All these things that we've included already, now we want to give guests a different bit of a, a choice for them. Some people love to drink, so we offered a beverage package. On any cruise you take, if you're a guest of ours, you can have that as a one of your choices. That's wine and beer at lunch or dinner. For 20 bucks a day, you can actually up increase that to all premium liquor. Or if you're a person who says, well, I'm not a drinker at all, I like a shore excursion. I want to be a shore excursion person. I want to go on shore excursions. We give you a choice of a number of shore excursions based on the length of your cruise for you to take. And if you're like me, who doesn't really know, because I do like to drink and I do like to do shore excursions, but I don't want them all the time, I might just say, I want a shipboard credit. And with that, I will use that. And that's what we get on every cruise, because our slogan at Oceana is, your world, your way. It means it's inclusive by choice. And so we give you your world the way you want it while you're on board. This is what it looks like. 
when you look at Oceana, as I mentioned, you've got your air, you've got O-Life Choice. Starting in 2022, we have all our free airport transfers. When you take our air, we include the transfer from the ship to the uh, from the airport to the ship and the ship back to the airport. If you don't take our air, you get a credit. We've got internet. We don't charge for specialty restaurants. We don't charge for, you know, the room services. We don't charge for fitness classes like Pilates and yoga. We don't charge for bottled water. We have, we were the first cruise line that said we're getting rid of 3 million plastic bottles of water. And we're just going to have bottled water, like in real glass bottles through a system that a lot of the luxury European hotels use called Vera Water. So we started that. We said people want, if they want soft drinks, if they want lattes or London fogs or whatever they want, we're not gonna charge them for that. Even when you go in our laundry room, get a load of this. You can actually go into our laundrette. There's TVs, the refrigerators full of fully stocked, you know, soft drinks that you can order a latte in there. You have a great time in our laundrettes. They're fantastic. But all of those things are really important. And especially as we come into cities all over the world, when we come into St. Petersburg, we stop right in front of the Hermitage for three days because we bring our small ship in there. We go through places like the Kiel Canal. So we want small with some of the biggest exotic itineraries. We want to make sure that when we're in a city and you have to get from the ship to the center of the city, that we don't charge you for those shuttles. So we want to have those as complementary to you as a guest. Those are important things. So those build up from what guests might have to pay for on the premium lines, which are so amazing at what they do as well. But with Oceana, it's just a little bit more. It's called the upper premium market. We're not all inclusive, but we're inclusive by choice. And that makes it really great. And finally, with Expedia, this is one of the greatest things I can offer you. This is something that with us and we we can do is that as a partner to Oceana Cruises, Expedia is amazing at being able to partner you to whatever vacation you want. I've already mentioned that. But one of the great things with us is we have exclusive amenities with them. So over 80 sailings a year have prepaid gratuities with them. So we, it's not something we don't usually include. So this is fantastic. And what we offer when we do a cruise night like this or a virtual evening is we offer an additional $200 shipboard credit for you to be able to use. So if you book anything before the end of March 31st, and the reason I put March 31st there is because our prices are going up on April 1st. So if there's something you see, lock it in, and then you'll, you're going to get an extra $200 shipboard credit as well. So $200 shipboard credit on top of your account just comes off at the end. Whatever you want to use it on is just fine. So Expedia has that as what they call an exclusive amenity to us. And as I mentioned, if you're past guests, there's different past sailings. If you're a single guest, we have a few sailings that we have at a reduced single supplement. So ask your consultant about that. If you're interested in any of the South America or any of the exotic itineraries, take a look at some of our beautiful itineraries online or ask your consultant to get you one of our brochures. And all I want to do is just say, I want you to remember where you've been before. I know lots of you are starting to really book your travel for next year and the year beyond. But I want you to think about places that you maybe have been to before and kind of go back in it with a new twist. Maybe you want to go into um, St. Petersburg, but have a, a private visa package where you can do some pretty cool itinerary kind of tours or maybe you want to do some green tours or maybe you want to do some bicycling around Portofino or go into the Taj Mahal or go into Abu Dhabi so these are things that Oceana offers we want you just remember what you love about travel and anything you want is there for you and I will end that now because I have talked for almost an hour and I'm so sorry I usually don't talk this long but I do want to say that I want you to stay healthy and positive and we're at the end of that marathon but the gates are opening up and I really hope you'll come and join our Oceana family so Lisa I'll give it back to you and I want to thank everybody for hanging out for this long and I'm sorry I'm a chatter no wonder my name's Kathy chatty Kathy but I know you're going to yeah, love Oceana you. if you come to it. I think everybody absolutely loved it. We had a hundred people on plus wow. we had some extra people on Facebook live. So you definitely enthralled them. I um, just want to go through, actually, it was a couple comments. You talked about nobody goes on Oceana because of the food. And Lois said, I went on Oceana because of the food. Um, Clark but had, food had Lois already been on the ship before that? 
<laughs> That's why you come back the second time for the food. Yeah, Clark said food is amazing. Lois said gluten free. Uh, I love the marina. Clark again, love the marina. Awesome. Um, Anne says thank you, Kathy, for sharing the ship, the new ship photo. Um, Lois again, Tahiti on the marina was our first cruise. Amazing, amazing. So lots and lots of compliments. But we do have a couple questions. Sure. Uh, there is a question: Do you all, when you're in South America, do you offer a side trip to Iguazu Falls? Um, that's a really good question. We always have when we've been there and I can find that out for you by tomorrow and I will send it to you, Lisa. And, um, you. you know, you can get it to whoever is Don, asking, but we have done those tours before. So I think there, I think Iguazu is always part of it. It's an incredible place. Okay. Uh, question. What are the demographics? Oh, good question. Um, so our age ranges from, uh, we've had, 44 year olds right up to 90 year olds you know it but I will say the the real true age is around 60 to 75 but it's interesting I was in doing a, a cruise night a while ago and uh, this was over a year ago now um, and I had these you know two 40 year olds sitting in the audience and I kind of went up to them and I said do, do you have the right cruise night and they go yeah we're foodies and we've heard about Oceana. And those are the kinds of things that, you know, kind of Oceana transcends any age because it's it, it, people, if they want small, it's like the most beautiful hotel you've seen. If you want, if you don't want all the big, big entertainment and you don't want all the announcements and everything, it's the most beautiful hotel you're ever going to be on. So it doesn't really matter your age. We do take kids. Uh, we don't get a lot of kids, but we don't have a kids program either. So it's a, it's a more quiet experience with a lot of punch in it, you know? So it, 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 I hope that kind of answers your question. The average age is, and when I was around South America, this was a holiday sailing, it was Christmas time and the holidays, and you should see what the ships do for all of the, you know, faiths on board the ship. It's absolutely mind blowing. Um, but I have to say the average age was 50. And so there was people who never took our short excursions. They just wanted to get off and sit in a restaurant over Christmas time or go on a bike ride. The bike rides were always kind of in, in demand because that's what people wanted to do. So, and people who hadn't ridden a bike for years got on a bike ride, you know. So it was intimate, but younger. So Tahiti, Lois, you've been there. You were saying, um, you know, Tahiti, that it, it just depends on the crowd. And it, so age doesn't matter, you know. All right, thank you. Uh, there's yeah. another question about Egypt. Is that an itinerary that you cover? Yeah. So my goodness, I'm so glad someone asked. There was one slide in there that had a bit of Egypt, but we do have Egypt in 2023 as well. And um, so we come up through Luxor in the Valley of the Kings and Queens and oh, you guys, it's so beautiful. Yeah, that, that'll have the option to do an overland as well. Okay. Um, there's another question about it was air really included? Am I hearing that wrong? And, and no, you're not. Um, air from Edmonton is an extra 250. And then as Kathy also mentioned, if you don't want to do air with Oceana, there's an air credit off the cost of your cruise. And they're really um, big Lois air said, credits. Yeah. Yeah. Lois said, we've already booked our fifth Oceana cruise. Love you, oh. Lois. Um, and, Anne, and Anne said, Kathy, you can talk as long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so uh, all much. All right. Um, will there be an overland and post cruise options for the 51 day South America, Miami to Santiago, Iguazu Falls, Machu Picchu? Yeah, Machu Picchu for sure. Um, and I, I'm pretty, I'm almost 100% positive. But again, I've got it on my notes here. So I'll, I've written it down, Lisa, so I'll get it to you. But I'm pretty sure we offer Iguazu Falls. We always have before. I, I should have put that in. I'm so sorry. No, perfect. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, thank you. I mean, it was a phenomenal presentation. And with the amount of people on here, I know that everybody's dying to travel. My, I had to think for a couple of moments last week of where is my passport and has it expired yet because it's been so long since I've used it. Um, I love the fact that you talked about the best price guarantee, the flexible booking policies. And I really, really love the fact that 180 day world cruise for 2023 sold out in one day. So if yeah. anybody here is thinking that people aren't booking travel, you're wrong. They are. <laughs> We've missed yeah. out. The whole, the whole world now is going on this new thing called revenge travel. 
because <laughs> I've been deprived for two years. I want more. I want bigger. I want longer. And that's the reason that we're running these travel uh, travel talks every Thursday night. So if you do have any questions, please reach out to your consultant for us to help you plan. Um, remember to follow us on Facebook, check out our YouTube channel as well. All of our travel talks are, uh, are recorded and you can watch them again. Next week, we are featuring As America uh, Cruises, which again Ooh. is another small cruise, cruise ship uh, experience. And we're having a very special experience on April 1. Now that's going to be in the afternoon. So contact your consultant about that. And it's going to be with Captain Philippe from Azamara Cruises talking to us from his home in Greece. How right. wonderful. I want to come so, on that. I, well, you, you, you're welcome. <laughs> to. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for your past travels. We look forward to planning more dream vacations for you. Have a wonderful evening and thank you for giving us your time. And Kathy, again, thank you for a fabulous presentation. Thank you so much, everybody. And come and join our family. We'd love to have you on board. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.